Welcome to Health Facts with Dr. Dinesh. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest progress in COVID-19 vaccine production, and we're going to find out who should be receiving this vaccine and who shouldn't, and what are the most common symptoms after vaccination. But first, the latest news about COVID-19 infection worldwide. As of August 3rd, 2020, total cases of COVID-19 infection are 18,237,006 people and death 692,835 and recovered 11,447,153. 99% of currently infected patients all over the world in mild condition. An average of 6% of total closed cases are death and 11,447,153 are recovered, as mentioned before, 94% of the total closed cases. Cumulative number of cases by number of days since 10,000 cases are on the rise in United States and second country being Brazil. Cumulative cases in United States are almost 2 million cases more than Europe. Cumulative number of death by number of days since 100 deaths shows that United States has 50,000 more deaths than the second country, which is Brazil. However, we had 50,000 more deaths in Europe compared to United States. In this graph from John Hopkins University of Medicine, they showed that the United Kingdom has the most fatality rate among the uh, first 20 country, which is currently most affected by COVID-19 worldwide and uh, second country is Mexico, third country is Ecuador, and Iran is fourth country 5.5 percent. So the fatality rate, which means a uh, number of deaths per 100 confirmed cases in United Kingdom is 15.1 percent, which is quite high. If you're interested in tracking vaccine production all over the world, this is the great website for you, which is called raps.org. And it says experts estimate that a fast track vaccine development process could speed a successful candidate to market in approximately 12 to 18 months if the process goes smoothly from conception to market availability. In this website, you could track the progress of every single company is working on different vaccines, uh, specifically on COVID-19. Uh, for example, uh, the Moderna, as you can see here, uh, which is in phase three of development of this vaccine. In July 14, 2020, uh, this article published in the New England Journal of Medicine publication, and it's titled, An mRNA Vaccine Against SARS-CoV-2 preliminary report and uh, what they did is that they conducted a phase one dose escalation open label trial including 45 healthy adults 18 to 55 years old of age who received two vaccinations 28 days apart with mrna 1273 in a dose of 25 microgram 100 microgram or 250 microgram in which there were 15 participants in each dose group so here is the original article here is an interesting chart in this article showing the side effects after the vaccination of, uh, for different dosages 25 microgram 100 microgram and 250 microgram in which gray shows the mild symptoms blue shows moderate and yellow severe symptoms this is the primary vaccination results and this one is the secondary vaccination results after 28 days as you can see uh, arthralgia which means uh, pain in the uh, joints are minimal but uh, not in the second vaccination it 
shows that more than 50% of uh, cases, as you can see it here is 50% uh, of cases uh, had some sort of uh, arthralgia, uh, fatigue. Uh, most people in the second vaccination has uh, fatigue and uh, fever uh, after second vaccination again 50, more than 50 percent of people had this uh, symptom uh, chills uh, more than 50 percent has this headache uh, it's very severe in the second vaccination even in, in the first vaccination up up to 50 percent of people had this uh, symptom uh, myalgia which means pain in your muscles uh, more than 50 percent has it uh, nausea uh, it's close to 50 percent uh, but these are different dosages right uh, so we were talking about the 250 dosage uh, 250 microgram dosage in the second vaccination uh, you could see there's a uh, almost 100% of people had this symptom. So uh, in third phase, which happened in 27th of July, they decided to go with uh, 100 microgram dosage. It has high percentage of occurrence. Let's say we're talking about the headache and 100 microgram. So as you can see in the second vaccination, 60% uh, of patients have this symptom as for the chills, in second vaccination, 100 microgram, uh, up to 80% of patients had this symptom. Fever uh, in second vaccination, up to 40% of patients had it. Uh, fatigue, uh, most patients up to 80% in second vaccination had this symptom. And arthralgia, almost 20%. So my conclusion from this study is that more than 50% of participants in this study uh, had at least six different symptoms uh, after the second vaccination, which is fatigue, fever, chills, headache, myalgia, and nausea. However, they concluded the mRNA-1273 vaccine-induced anti-SARS-CoV-2 immune responses in all participants, uh, which is true, and no trial limiting safety concern were identified. Of course, none of the participants had the severe COVID-19 infection like what we see in, our, in the ICU and hospitals, but as we discussed in my last video, more than 95% of patients with COVID-19 all over the world are mild cases, which probably have some of these symptoms that they have uh, mentioned here, such as fatigue, chills, headache, myalgia, and pain, uh, which caused by vaccination. So they have the same symptoms and mild with an actual COVID-19 infection, not just a vaccine. As mentioned in July 27, 2020, Moderna, which is the company that is producing the vaccine for COVID-19, announces phase three COVID study of mRNA vaccine against COVID-19, which is called mRNA-1273 begins. So we talked about phase one and here is phase three. The randomized placebo control trial is expected to include approximately 30,000 participants in the United States testing an mRNA-1273 dosage of 100 microgram. As mentioned before, uh, the primary endpoint uh, will be the prevention of symptomatic COVID-19 disease. While after second vaccination in phase one, as mentioned before, more than 50% of participants have shown six different symptoms which they are trying actually to prevent with the vaccination. So my question is that if mRNA-1273, which is an mRNA vaccine against COVID-19, causes six different symptoms in more than 50% of participants or people who are receiving the vaccine from the same symptoms that COVID-19 infection could cause, 
who should be receiving the vaccine, considering the fact that most cases of COVID-19 infection all over the world are mild cases. So I believe healthcare professionals, elderly people, patients with chronic conditions, and long-term care facility staff are people who should receive the vaccines only, while other people should only stay active and keep their immune system strong. There is a link on top right hand side of this video that you could actually click on to go to my previous video about five top supplements uh, in COVID-19. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video and find it beneficial, please share it in your social media and uh, to your friend and families and uh, like always stay happy and healthy. Thanks and have a great day.